Our second reading today comes from 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 8 through 11. Above all, maintain constant love for one another, for love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without complaining. Like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received. Whoever speaks must do so as one speaking the very word of God. Whoever serves must do so with the strength that God supplies, so that God may be glorified in all things through Jesus Christ. To him belong the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Our third reading today is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11, verses 28 through 30, page 12 in your pew Bible. Come to me, all that you are, weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The word of the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm Alex Mamalian, and I'm a rising freshman at the George Washington University. With this being my fifth mission trip, I can say that no one trip has been the same, and that it is impossible to really know what to expect. But I was nevertheless excited to help out and learn about the community in Fayetteville, and I can't wait to share my experiences with you. This past week, our team traveled to Fayetteville, North Carolina, to aid the communities affected by Hurricane Matthew in 2016 and Hurricane Florence in 2018. In my second day of work, my team was tasked with insulating the main walls of a house damaged by Florence, as well as the crawl space beneath the house's floorboards. When Chris asked for volunteers to work in the crawl space, I eagerly raised my hand and then realized soon after exactly what the job would entail. <laughs> Details I hadn't thought through because I may or may not had gone to bed at 2 a.m. the night before, following some late night conversation with the girls of the trip, as well as a thoroughly entertaining push-up competition between Nick and Chandler. In the midst of my sleep deprivation, I had forgotten that going in about three foot tall crawl space meant I'd have to, well, crawl. Despite my initial doubts, my fearless team and I made, our, made the best out of a job that required removing old, moldy insulation from the space that had been damaged in the hurricane, and then replacing it by rolling out, cutting, and securing new insulation to the entirety of the bottom of the house. This all had to be done on our stomachs or backs because of the physical restrictions of the space. After a hazmat suit dance party, one luckily false snake sighting, and a full-on Disney sing-along, we were able to complete the job three minutes before we had to leave the site at 4 p.m. The homeowners, an elderly father and his adult son, were extremely appreciative of our team's work at rebuilding their home. I noticed that rebuilding seemed to be an underlying theme of our week in Fayetteville. Just as, Fay just as Fayetteville had to rebuild, our lives are always in need of rebuilding, whether it be our relationships with others, our ever-changing perspectives and ideas, or our faith. In today's society especially, it's easy for us to drift from our faith. Even if we had a strong, grounded foundation to start out with, the slightest event can send off a chain reaction of thoughts, feelings, and behaviors that quickly bury even the deepest faith. I've found that the mission trip helps me rebuild my own faith by hearing what my peers have to say about their faith journeys, in addition to reaffirming my beliefs and reinforcing the strong foundation that faith requires. After being quite literally in the foundation of a house this week, I can confirm that a strong foundation is essential for rebuilding. Our devotions this week were centered around love, building a beloved community, and what it means to be a child of God, an essential part of the body of Christ. These seemingly simple topics provoked some unforgettable conversations that truly strengthened the foundation of my faith. As I think about rebuilding now, here are some of the takeaways. Rebuilding takes time. The homeowners I got the chance to meet taught us that no one had, no one had worked on their house in three and a half months. The man explained that they weren't able to get flood insurance because they weren't in a flood area. So when the hurricanes affected them, they weren't able to get any help from insurance and had to wait a very long time for assistance. In addition, much of the recovery and progress made after Matthew was ruined when the second storm Florence hit. Sometimes rebuilding feels like you're taking one step forward and two steps back. 
Rebuilding often requires the help of others. This week we talked about creating a beloved community. Beloved community means seeing everyone as a child of God, loving one another just as Jesus loves us, recognizing the humanity in people, and carrying their burdens. To rebuild, we need to open ourselves up to help from others and allow them to carry our burdens with us, just as the homeowners we helped open themselves up to our aid. Rebuilding can also be messy. We all carry our own burdens that weigh on each of us in a different way, and rebuilding isn't always a smooth process. It's challenging, us to, it's challenging to let go of our burdens, but, if we need to remember that, but we need to remember that God says that we should give our burdens to him. In a more literal sense, this week we dealt with fiberglass, sawdust, dust, dirt, paint, and countless other messy substances. I think I speak for everyone when I say that we couldn't wait to shower every day after the work site, no matter how ice cold we knew that shower would be. Yes, rebuilding is definitely messy. While our faith sometimes feels like it needs rebuilding, we have the hope of salvation, forgiveness, and God's grace because we are all children of God. If there was one thing that stood out to me about the community of Fayetteville this week, it's that their community has hope. We can all learn from Fayetteville and find hope in the rebuilding we need in our own lives as we reflect on our faith, share our burdens with others, and give the rebuilding process the time and resources it needs. Amen. Hello, I'm uh, Teddy Andrew. I'm a rising sophomore at Denison University. It only took eight years at the church and six mission trips, but I finally made it to the pulpit. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, the thought of giving my first sermon was really intimidating, and it still is. Doing anything for the first time, stepping out of your comfort zone and into the unknown is always scary. You don't know what to expect with firsts or how to deal with any challenges that may come with it as a result. This trip was full of firsts. It was the first time three college students came back for the trip, even if two of them decided to come back so late that they didn't even make it on the shirt. <laughs> it was the first trip for Preston, Blake, Ryan, Susan, and new youth pastor Chris and it was the first time a mission trip was coordinated alongside another local church, St. Francis from down the street. Essentially, going into this week, with the abundance of firsts, nobody, even the mission trip veterans, knew what to expect. But the challenges and unknowns facing us were inconsequential compared to those of the woman whose, help, whose house we helped rebuild. We spent two days sanding, wiping down, and painting the entirety of Miss Brown's home in Fayetteville after Hurricane Florence caused a nearby stream's water level to rapidly increase. At its worst, the water level rose to submerge half of the one floor house. All of her furniture, carpeting, personal items, and objects of sentimental value, and eventually her ceiling too, were damaged beyond repair and deemed non-salvageable. All that remained were the family photos that she had hung high up on her walls. This flood was a first for her as well. Miss Brown had been living in this house since 1975, and not once, including Hurricane Matthew two years prior, did the water level reach anywhere near her house in that time. When she visited the house to meet and thank us the second day, she told us that this was why she never decided to get flood insurance on her house. She lives alone and was burdened with facing the situation by herself, a problem that she'd never faced before or even thought about facing. For the past 10 months, she'd slept in apartments, hotels, and friends' houses, and altogether moved a total of five times. However, through her losses, her stresses, and her strifes, she was still hopeful about the future. She walked us through the empty house, talking about where she would put everything when she finally moved back in, how much she liked the colors we had painted the walls, and uh, even told us that when she had fully settled, she planned to become someone who flood victims could reach out to for emotional support, now having shared their experience. It was in this statement that I saw God in her. From the scripture reading from 1 Peter today is the statement, offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Miss Brown was the embodiment and the realization of this teaching. 
It was in this way that she took everything she'd learned from her first time with an issue like this and prepared to use it to help others suffering from similar situations. She's paying it forward. Each of us who were present on the work site during this interaction were able to take away this message from her, to be kind to one another, and to do everything that we could to lighten or share others' burdens. This message carried over into the way the mission team came together as a community and supported each other throughout the week. Whether it be holding a piece of wood in place to make it easier for someone to drill, celebrating a catch and ultimate frisbee, cheering for everyone who attempted the obstacle course at the rock climbing place on our fun day, or just simply being there for one another and talking to each other, nobody ever felt alone in anything they were facing. As a result, all of the firsts and unknowns facing the groups at the beginning of the week began to seem less like challenges and more like blessings. The multitude of returning mission team members, people going on their first mission trip with PPC, college students, and the youth of St. Francis were able to forge bonds together that formed a beautiful community between us all. A community where everyone was equal, regardless of age, experience, or personality. One where you'll find support in times of success and in your weakest moments. And one where time and distance between members doesn't change the strength of the bond. With that being said, I would encourage you all in the congregation to consider coming on a future mission trip, because if I learned anything this week, it's that stepping out of your comfort zone can lead to the most rewarding things imaginable. Amen. Hi. <laughs> My name is Haley Phillips, and I'm a rising junior at Winston Churchill High School. Today, I would like to start off by saying how incredibly blessed I am to be standing here in front of all of you today. It took me a while to fully comprehend how blessed I actually am, and I feel that you all have been through the same problem. On the mission trip, multiple devotions were based on burdens. We were asked to write down a burden that we have. Now, this was where my problem started. It wasn't that I could not come up with a burden, but that I could not choose which one to pick. As I was sitting in a circle surrounded by friends and so much love, I was stuck in my head going over all the things that make me sad, angry, fearful, anxious, and even in moments, vulnerable. In this moment, I realized that I had never dealt with my burdens. I kept them inside where they were safe, and I could, admit, still, I could still admit that I had control over all aspects of my life. First off, I will never have control over my life. And secondly, it was crazy that I was trying to protect something that caused me so much inner turmoil. So when I looked around that circle, sitting in itchy grass and eating in the sticky humidity, I saw the fearlessness of all these people writing down something they struggle with. And that's when I realized that I am never alone. No one in this room and congregation is ever alone. We are a beloved community, loved by at least one person in this room. But what unites us all? The answer is pretty simple, actually. It is the love that God has given us, whether it be the love we have for each other or for the Trinity itself. I saw love this past week when we did many tasks to help reconstruct all the people's homes that were destroyed around two years ago. Multiple of the owners of the houses we were working on came by and were so gracious. For instance, on the first day of work, my group and I were ripping out old moldy drywall insulation and dirty soggy junk from a man's laundry room. All of this man's belongings had been sitting there for around two years. The smell was overbearing, it was hot, and it was hard to pick up everything, but no one complained. The owner helped us all with it. Rebuilding this house was his burden, but he saw that he could not deal with it alone, so he worked together with us and with his faith in God to help him. In one of our devotions, we did the same thing. After writing down one of our burdens, we folded the piece of paper up and gave it to someone else. Here, I would like to shout out Susan. You were definitely the best burden partner I could have. <laughs> I saw love that day. No one lost each other's burdens. In fact, Abigail gave Eliza's burden a run for its money by really crumpling up that slip of paper. 
This really represented the love for thy neighbor, since we trusted and carried someone else's inner turmoil, while also carrying our own. Later that night, we seeked even more support with our burdens. We laid them down on the cross so we could lay them down with God. I would like to share that my burden is truly based on uncertainty of the future. So when I laid it down with God, I didn't feel that instant relief as though a weight had been lifted off my shoulders. But I realized that my faith had to grow before it gradually left me. My burden was the fear that one day I was going to wake up and another person I loved would be gone. I think that everyone in this room has felt that in some moment of their life. And sadly, this burden will have to come true one day. But over the past week, I came to the true realization that God is all-knowing and always present. For this reason, I know I have his support that there is to, for, in all that there is to come. And I also know that everything is going to be okay because I am loved and I can love others. You all, you all are never alone and are never unloved as long as we have faith in God and in our beloved community. Amen.